Hello, finally we got to the point that we can go through the directional method for dimensioning the uh, fillet welds according to Eurocode 1993-18. The basics of calculation for other codes might be the same, the concept is completely the same. The method that is used uh, would be a little bit different in directional method that I'm going to explain in this video. As I explained in the first video, we have two methods in Eurocode to be used for dimensioning the well or checking the well, the fillet welds. Uh, directional method is given in 4532. In this method, the forces transmitted by a unit length of, of weld are resolved into components parallel and transverse to the longitudinal axis of the weld and normal and transverse to the plane of its throat. The design throat area should be taken as summation of L effective times A. L effective, as we explained, is the uh, length minus two times uh, leg size in each end. The location of the design throat area should be assumed to be concentrated in the root. A uniform distribution of stress is assumed on the throat section of the well leading to the normal stresses and shear stresses shown in figure 4-5 as follows. So this is very important note of the code. So a uniform distribution of stress is assumed on the throat section of the well. This is what I explained also in the stress calculation in the previous video. Sigma perpendicular is the normal stress perpendicular to the throat. Sigma parallel is the normal stress parallel to axis of the weld. Tau perpendicular and tau parallel. We can have a look on this with the given figure. So here we can see how they are explained. Sigma parallel is applied to this surface so it means that if we look at the longitudinal direction of the weld and if it is under shear force this shear force can act as a normal stress to each section of that direction tau parallel as sketched here is parallel to the longitudinal direction of the weld in the plane that it has the minimum area. If this is going to be weld leg size and this is going to be throat of the weld, then we can see that A is the minimum value in transmitting the load from one plate to the other plate. So as a result, tau parallel is always in this plane. Sigma perpendicular and tau perpendicular are normal and shear in this plane. If we can sketch it from the side, this is throat thickness, and sigma is always the component of the stress which is perpendicular to this throat thickness and the other one is tau perpendicular understanding these uh, three sigma perpendicular tau perpendicular and also tau parallel are the most important part of weld dimensioning Sigma parallel is not needed. We will check in the next clause. The normal stress sigma parallel parallel to the axis is not considered when verifying the design resistance of the weld. The design resistance of the fillet weld will be sufficient if the following are both satisfied. By calculating sigma perpendicular, tau perpendicular and tau parallel, we can check these two equations. Typically, the first one is governing if the weld is with the same leg sizes. 
F u is the nominal ultimate tensile strength of the weaker part joint, and beta w is the appropriate correlation factor taken from table 4.1. Welds between parts with different material strength grades should be designed using the properties of the material with the lowest strength grade. It means that you, if you have S235 connected to S355, then uh, the weaker material is taken as the uh, governing material for calculation of the belt. The only missing part is beta w. We can find it in the given table for one. It depends on the material uh, correlation factor for fillet welds. If we have S235, then 0.8, S355, 0.9, and other values as given in the table. Coming back to the equation here we can see that the equation has almost nothing when you calculate sigma and tau then then we are done the rest is just putting inside this equation and check if everything looks to be fine uh, let's start to understand how this sigma and tau perpendicular needs to be calculated for dimensioning a weld according to directional method given by this code, uh, everything is done with the simple basics of a strength of material, sigma, tau, and other actions. And then we just need to understand how to determine the sigma and tau perpendicular to the throat thickness. Let's uh, have a look on what we had earlier for calculation of a weld. Assume that this is a weld and take just one force in zeta direction if this is x and y and we have only fz. We calculated sigma by dividing fz divided by aw which is summation of of L times T. T is representing the weld leg size. This is what we did in the previous video. Now let's have a look on this point just as a one element. Sigma which is fz divided by aw and then as far as it's uh, evenly distributed we can assume that it's fz divided by the segment area so area of the segment in other words the force which is applied to this segment is fz now i can look at it from the side and this is fz Keep it in mind that uh, you can only find the components of a force, not from the stress. If you have the stress, first you need to multiply by the area and then find the components in other directions. So Fz is the force applied to this segment. Now I can find the components, which this is going to be F or let's write it down as force in the shear format. It's the V perpendicular representing tau perpendicular, which is Fz times cosinus 45. Let's assume that the weld is with the equal legs. And we have this force, which is F perpendicular and is Fz again times cosinus or sinus 45 and then we need to divide this by the area which one dimension is a and the other dimension is the length of the segment so tau and also sigma both are because you can see that v and f both are the same value fz times S square root of 2 divided by 2 divided by A times the segment length. 
if I simplify this, it will be fz times s square root of 2 divided by 2 times a times l. And if I multiply by s square root of 2, then tau perpendicular will be sigma perpendicular and it will be fz divided by s square root of 2al. And if you wanted to calculate based on what we learned earlier, you calculate that sigma is fz divided by e times l. You can see that the difference between these two components or these two results are only in terms of what is substituted for t. So here t is substituted by a square root of 2 times a. This is also applied to shear forces or shear stresses if you have and they are in the uh, perpendicular to the longitudinal direction of a weld. Let's go for one explanation to understand it better. Assume that you have the shear force or shear stress. Let's write F1. If you want to calculate the forces in these two directions, then it will be F1 times the square root of 2 divided by 2, and also F1, again, cosinus or sinus 45. And for calculation of the stress in these two directions, you just need to divide it by A times the length of the segment. So sigma will be the same as tau and then it will be f1 s square root of 2 divided by 2 divided by a times l and then it can be f1 divided by s square root of 2 times a times l and if you wanted to calculate sigma or or tau here you just calculated f1 divided by t times l you can see that the only difference is instead of t we are using a square root of 2 times a. As a rule of thumb, we can uh, just calculate sigma and tau that we already calculated in the previous video. And instead of t for sigma perpendicular and tau perpendicular, we just need to substitute t with a square root of 2 times the throat thickness. It's very straightforward and you don't need to think uh, of any any other just substitute t with a square root of 2 times a. But for tau in the parallel direction or in the longitudinal direction, let's have a look on that. It's a little bit different. If you calculated the shear stress in this hatched area as to be tau, and you are going to calculate the shear stress in the throat plane first you need to multiply tau with the leg of the weld and then divide it by throat thickness so it will be tau will be f divided by t times l formerly we calculated that way and now you just need to divide tau with f divided by a times l because the force is constant it is just transferring from one plane to the other plane in each plane it is going to be divided by the area of that plane so we can see that there is no difference between these two equations and instead of t we just need to substitute this t with a Uh, to understand better, let's go through one simple example. Suppose we have 120 millimeter width of the weld, and they are with the distance of, let's say, 100 or 200 millimeter. And in the centroid of the weld, we can assume to have one shear force in x direction and also bending moment about x, 20 kN meter. According to what we learned earlier, 
area of the weld will be 2 times 120 millimeter times T, 240 T square millimeter. Moment of inertia about X will be 2 times 120 millimeter times T times 100 millimeter power by 2. 2.4 10 power by 6 T millimeter 4. And how in X direction due to the shear force will be 100 kilonewton divided by 240 T square millimeter. So it will be 100 divided by 240, 417 divided by T megapascal. And we have sigma in zeta direction because of bending moment mxy divided by ix. It will be 20. This is kilonewton meter. With that, I noticed kilonewton meter times the maximum vertical distance. Uh, on the top will be 100 millimeter divided by 2.4 10 power by 6 times t it will be 833 divided by t megapascal now if we look at the these two stresses in the weld just the segment of the weld it's not needed to consider the entire weld we have sigma which is in this direction 833 divided by t and we have the shear stress which is in the longitudinal direction of the weld we can see that tau in this example is in the longitudinal direction so it's making tau parallel but sigma is perpendicular or as a transverse stress in the longitudinal direction of the weld so it's making sigma perpendicular and tau perpendicular then if you want to have these three components sigma perpendicular will be as same as tau perpendicular and it will be 833 divided by just instead of t substitute with a square root of two times a that's simple nothing else but for tau parallel just divide 417 and instead of T, just write A. That would save time if you are calculating by hand. So these are sigma, substituting T as A square root of 2. And this is tau, substituting T as A. Then we have sigma perpendicular, tau perpendicular, and tau parallel. Let's go to one more example. Let's assume we have uh, now this type of weld, which is very common for the construction. And assume that we have some forces and bending moments in the centroid of weld, resulting in some values. I will just go with tau and sigma. So tau in x direction, in total considering all the actions is going to be let's say 100 divided by t megapascal tau in y direction is going to be 200 divided by t megapascal and sigma in zeta direction is let's say 300 divided by t megapascal i mean all the actions that are combined now are summarized as the final values and suppose that these uh, values are given for the most critical point like here we can see that tau x is in the longitudinal direction of the weld so if i just sketch this weld i have tau x i have tau y and i have sigma z it is clear that tau x is in the longitudinal direction of uh, of weld as a result for tau x you just need to calculate tau parallel for directional method and instead of t you just need to substitute with a so tau parallel is tau x and instead of t i can just substitute with a will be 100 divided by a megapascal 
But for the other two, they are transverse, considering the longitudinal direction of the world. So then you just need to sketch that segment from the side to understand how it is going to be combined. In the first one, I have sigma z, which is coming in this direction. And for the second one, I have tau y, which is coming in the other direction. Two components for sigma z. I put z inside the parentheses to emphasize that they are coming from sigma z. And I have two components sigma perpendicular this is due to tau y and the other one is tau perpendicular due to y so here you can see that we can easily just substitute the t with a square root of 2 and then combine them with the desired direction so these two values due to sigma z will be 300 divided by t and i have to substitute t with a square root of 2 and also these two sigma perpendicular tau perpendicular due to tau y will be 200 divided by t substituting t as a square root of 2. now we can write down these two 300 divided by a square root of 2 200 divided by a square root of 2. Now we can see that sigma perpendicular in both cases are in the same direction. As a result, sigma perpendicular total will be 300 plus 200 divided by a square root of 2, 500 divided by a square root of 2 times a. But we can see that the tau, perpendicular tau, are in opposite directions. As a result, the resultant will be deducting these two. So tau perpendicular in total will be 300 minus 200 divided by a square root of 2. Then it will be 100 divided by a square root of 2 times a. So these are the components that you need to put inside the calculation. Now let's check one of the Equations given in SSAB catalog for hollow sections uh, calculation. In the manual of this uh, calculation, in equation 324, we can see that the equation is given for dimensioning of a weld, then the minimum throat thickness should be greater than this equation. I'm going to explain how it has been calculated and um, understand that the given table in the SSAB manual is not uh, intended to be used for every situation. It is clear that the given table, it is obvious that the table is given for, for being used when the part is subjected to one dimensional force and it's going to be just welded from one side so it is not applied to every situation it's very good if if we know that now let's uh, check it out together we can make the equation with a practical example assume that you have a hollow section which is connected to another party like an end plate and it's going to be under only tension or compression whether the parameter is t or force let's go with force f and it's going to be welded only from outside let's start with what we learned in these videos First of all, we need to calculate the area of the weld. So let's assume that the total length is sigma L times T. 
and as far as I'm going to use the thickness of the plate here as T, let's write it down with TW. This is the area of the weld. And we have only tension force. So you just need to calculate sigma Z, which is F divided by AW. So it will be F divided by sigma L times TW. And if we sketch the weld, we can assume that it's a tension in this plane applied to this dash lines, or it's a shear stress in the other place. It doesn't matter, as I explained earlier. Now we have only two components sigma perpendicular and tau perpendicular. According to what I explained, we just need to rewrite sigma z and instead of t we can substitute with a. So sigma perpendicular will be the same as tau perpendicular and it's going to be f divided by sigma l times a times a square root of 2. We do not have any other actions, so we just need to apply these two stresses into the given equation. Now coming back to given equation in Eurocode, as it is a, a equal leg size weld, the second one would not be governed, and we just need to check with this equation. Sigma perpendicular power by 2, F divided by sigma L times A square root of 2 power by 2, plus 3 times F divided by sigma L times S A square root of 2 times power by 2. We do not have tau parallel, and then it should be less than Fu divided by beta W times gamma m2. This will be 2 times f divided by sigma l times a square root of 2 should be less than fu divided by beta w times gamma m2. And from here we can find out f, f should be less than fu times sigma l times a square root of 2 divided by 2 times beta w times gamma m2. So it means that if you have a specific weld throat thickness like A, then the force needs to be less than this value. On the other side, usually we want to keep the weld and the connection to be the strongest part of transferring the load because it's intended to transfer the load. So it means that we are willing to have a, a strong weld and if the force is increased the weld is not failed so it should be stronger than the actual capacity of the cross section so it means that we want to have a strong weld so let me just write down fw FW needs to be greater than total actual capacity of the profile. So, so we are willing to have a kind of a strong weld not to be failed before the cross section. It means that we want to keep the, uh, the weld. I believe that you are familiar with the uh, Eurocode 199311. Uh, if it's in compression and if we ignore the mm, buckling effect, it will be the same as uh, tension. So the capacity for the cross section is always area of the section times Fy divided by gamma m0. And in our case, as far as we assume it's a thin hollow section with the thickness of T, the area of the cross section 
will be summation of the length in both in all corners or all edges times thickness so then f cross section in maximum will be sigma l times t of the section times f y divided by gamma m zero now if we come back to this equation let's keep it here so fw that is calculated here should be greater or equal to total actual capacity of the well so i can assume that fw can be at least sigma l times t times fy divided by gamma m0 and if i substitute this with the given equation here then it will be sigma l times t times fy divided by gamma m0 should be less than fu times sigma l times a square root of 2 divided by 2 beta w times gamma m2 we can see that uh, sigma l can be crossed and from here i can calculate the minimum throat thickness of the weld so it will be i want to write down like what we had it will be two times beta w divided by s square root of two i use this 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 one and this one and then gamma m2 divided by gamma m0 i use this and this and then fy divided by fu times t this is how the for example in ssab manual it has been calculated we can just have it also here equation 324 you might ask that okay why did uh, we need this one just to understand how the uh, minimum weld is determined so that's that's the only point and also understand that the given table is not uh, intended to be used for any situation it is just for this type of uh, connection now let's go through one real example in the other video it is now quite long one so here is uh, what we understood just to recap for dimensioning of the weld you just need to calculate the stresses and if you calculate the stresses then you can come to this equation beta w can be taken from the given table for one from here you can see that beta w is something 8 0 0.8 0 0.9 and then gamma m2 is 1.25 and the rest are pretty simple if we have beta w gamma m2 and fu from the weakest plate then sigma perpendicular tau perpendicular and tau parallel can be calculated according to what we went through in this video i explained how to a step into directional method sometimes it is very complicated but i think that if you follow what i explained it would be pretty straightforward in the next video i'm going to solve two examples to see how the uh, calculation according to directional method can be done and we can see how it goes thank you for watching see you next time Bye.